So before we continue this C sharp course, I think it's important we talk about something called a struct and something called an enum. Now these two things are something that you don't really use that often when it comes to C sharp, but I think it's important to mention them so you know about them when it comes to C sharp. So what we're gonna start doing here is we're gonna start talking about a struct and we're just gonna really quickly go over structs because it's not something you will be using 99% of the times you're going to be using classes instead of structs, which will make sense in just a second. We're just going to glance over it here because we're not really going to be using struct in this course. I just think you should know about it. So the way we create a struct is first of all by defining structs inside our namespace. It's just going to call it something like person. That seems like something very small. It's, it's kind of like a small container for similar group things. So if we were to say we have this struct called person, I can define the first one, which could be a public, uh, let's say string. I'm gonna say this one is called name. I can define a public string called eye color. And I could go ahead and define a public int called age. So we're just creating a small object here, and there can be other things inside a struct besides just properties, like I just created here. Um, but again, the link in the description will talk a little bit more, more about structs if you do actually plan on learning a bit more about it. Just the basic idea here behind using structs is when you want to save memory, so unless you're making a really big application, you know, there's just like rarely cases where you want to use structs. So what we can do here is inside another class, if I want to create an object from this struct, we don't need to instantiate it in the same way as we would with classes because it's such so low on memory. Um, but what we can do is I'm going to say we have this person, which again is by referring to the struct, we refer to the name, not struct. So if I want to define a struct object down here, I don't write struct and then give it a name like person one. That's not how we do it. Uh, instead, you need to refer to the name of the struct. This is the same thing we do when it comes to classes. If I have a separate class below here, just to show it, because this will also make sense when we talk about enums. If I were to have another class, I'm just gonna call this one person as well. It's probably gonna give me an error because I have a struct called person, but I'm just gonna create it either way. What we would do is we would actually instantiate it, and after instantiating it, when we need to reference to a method inside the class, we would actually go ahead and refer to the name of the class dot the method name. So let's say I color is a method inside this class. This is how we would refer to it. So in the same way, when it comes to after we created the object up here, when I need to refer to something inside this struct, we need to refer to person. And we also need to refer to after creating it, person one dot name in that sense. So I could set this one equal to something like Daniel. Very basic. So if you want to learn more about structs, go ahead and check out the link in the description. Uh, but besides this, let's go ahead and talk about enums. This is the one I'm excited to talk about. So when it comes to an enum, it's kind of similar to a struct in the fact that we also create enums when we want to have a small sort of categorized container but when it comes to numbers. So now the question is, do we also create enums in the namespace level or where can we create an enum? We can create it inside the namespace, just like we did with the structs, or we can create it inside a class at this level here, or we can create it inside a struct. Hey, we just talked about that. So when it comes to creating this enum, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it inside my namespace level. So I'm gonna say we want to have a public, and here we do actually need to define the scope of this enum here. So I want to say we have a public enum called, let's not call this one person, let's call this one product. Because we need to deal with numbers. So we could use something like product codes. So now we have this public enum product codes. If I were to set this one as private, then we can only use this one inside this namespace. If I were to go in here and actually define some data for this enum here, um, we can go ahead and say we have something like milk. And I'm just gonna go ahead and assign it a value. Actually, let me not do that because I want to show you something afterwards. If I were to go ahead and say we have milk, let's put them next to each other instead. That also makes more sense for you. Juice, and we have tea. Notice that I'm making a list here with commas instead of semicolon. That is a different thing compared to classes or compared to structs. When we finish a line, we put a semicolon. 
in here, we're just creating a list. So this means that we need to use commas instead of semicolon. Now, when we don't put a value for these items, we are essentially auto incrementing the values, which means that milk right now has the value as zero, juice has value as one, and tea has a value as two. Now doing this is not really an optimal idea to do just to auto increment it because let's say we have an example where we have a database with these products inside of it. If I need to use the product code for these products and reference to something inside the database, then because it's auto incrementing it, I'm not deciding what the product code is. So therefore, if something messes up with the auto increment that I have no control over, then it's gonna mess up the reference inside the database. So it's just sort of a habit you should make to actually assign a value to it. And again, a product code would probably look like something like this, but just for testing purposes, we're just gonna go ahead and assign it uh, zero, because that makes sense. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and assign the next one. So I'm gonna set this one to one, and then the last one to two. It's also another thing to mention that these values inside, or actually these uh, different pieces of data, these list items, I'm gonna call them, inside the enum are what is called constants. What a constant is, is a type of variable that we cannot change later on in our code. It will actually throw us an error message. A constant has to remain the same, and the value inside a constant has to remain the same. And this is actually the exact same reason why it actually auto increments the numbers if you don't assign a value because it doesn't make sense to create a constant that you can't change or add something to later on if it has no value in it. So it automatically assigns a value because it's a constant. With these numbers, it would probably look a little bit more neat if you put them down below each other, like so. So we have a list item going downwards. And now we essentially have an enum. Now, another thing to note here before we continue on is that this name up here called milk is an enum data type. The number over here is technically an integer. This is something we need to talk about in just a second when we need to talk about how to use the data inside the enum. So if we were to go ahead and go down inside our main method here, I am gonna start by referring to the enum and actually say I want to refer to this zero inside my enum up here. So what I can do is I can say we don't have an enum because we just learned when it came to structs and classes that we refer to the name of the enum. So say product codes dot milk. And you can actually see it actually comes up with suggestions here to what I could choose if I wanted to. Right now there's three because there's three inside the enum. I'm just gonna refer to the milk. Now it's gonna give me an error message because I'm technically not using this data. I'm just saying, hey, this is the data but I haven't assigned it to a variable yet. So let's go and do that. When it comes to assigning enums or any kind of data to a variable, one way we could do it is by writing var. Just gonna call it test for now. And this is technically going to be correct because when you use var inside C-sharp, like we mentioned, or like I mentioned in the first episode where we talked about variables inside C-sharp, var, is going to automatically go in and look at what kind of data we're dealing with and say, oh, this is a string or this is an enum. And then it's just going to say, uh, say what it is and then be assigned to it. So if we were to hover on top of that, you can actually say it says, oh, this is an enum called product codes. Okay, so if I don't want to write va, which I kind of see as the lazy way of doing things and we want to actually write the proper data type, like had this been a string, I would write string in front of it because that's what we do. I would actually name this one product codes, not enum. Uh -huh. So now that we have this and I want to console.write line it, you'll actually see that something kind of weird happens because this is an enum data type. If I want to console log something, it has to be a string or it has to be an integer or something like that. We can't really console log enums. That doesn't make sense. So if I were to actually do that, you'll notice that we get milk inside the console. And the reason we do that is because when we console log some data, like for example, an enum, it converts the data to a string and inserts it inside the console. So this is technically a string data type that we're seeing inside the console. It is not an enum. But wait a second, you might say, we were trying to get the number. We're not trying to get milk. We want to get what it's equal to. 
So the way we do that is using something called casting. And like I said, we can do casting because we do have an integer version of this line here that we want to grab. So I'm going to cast into an integer type. So what I can do down here right before we actually console the right line in is I can write parentheses and say I want to refer to the integer version inside the enum. I'm going to go ahead and save this one and open my console. As you can see, it actually says zero inside the console. And the same thing we do if we want to do it the other way around. So if I were to go ahead and say that I want to grab an integer and this one is called test2, just to give it a name, and I want to set it equal to a number that I know exists up inside this enum, but I'm not looking for the number this time, I'm looking for what it's equal to. So I want to grab, for example, juice. So what I can do is I can set this one equal to one because that is the enum number for juice. And what I can then do is I can go ahead and go down inside my console.write line, just gonna copy paste, that's easier. And what I can do here is I can say we have test two and I want to grab not the integer, but the product codes data type. So we're to save this one, open up my browser or my, my console, you can see we get juice. So now we're casting it into the int, uh, into the, the enum data type in order to get the enum result in here, or the enum name for the list item. Now we talked about converting an enum into a string by simply console.write lining it inside the console. But what if I want to use it inside my code and actually convert the name into a string type? Well, in that case, we do actually have a built-in method inside C Sharp that can do that in a very simple way. So if I were to take, uh, let's say, test up here, which right now is a product code's type, which is an enum, and right now it's set to milk, but I need to get it as a string. What I can then do is I can take the name and write dot to string, parentheses, and this will in fact convert this into a string that we can actually use inside our code. So what I could do just to test this one out is I could actually go ahead and console lock it again. Again, some people might be faster when it comes to just simply writing it out instead of copy pasting it like I do. Um, that's just kind of how I like to do it. And again, there's a shortcut to do that faster. So pasting this one inside a console.write line instead and actually running it, you'll see that inside the console we get milk. Now let's say that this time we want to take a string and convert it into a enum. So we're going to do the opposite here. We don't actually have a built-in method like toString to do that. We do actually need to parse it in order to do it properly. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a, a string variable. I'm gonna call this one test3, again, just to give it a name. And I'm going to set this one equal to t. So after declaring this variable here, what I want to do is I want to convert it into an enum. And what we need to do first before we can actually do that, at least if you want to do this the proper way, is to check whether or not this is going to parse before you actually parse the data. And we did have some examples in the previous project where we talked about a calculator, where I didn't really show how to check for a parse first before we did the project, but I still saw some people do it, which was very good to see people do. So what we can do here is we can go and declare a empty uh, enum variable type. So I can actually go and say we have product codes. And I'm just gonna call this one uh, get products to give it some kind of name. Again, we're just giving it something here. So now we declared an enum, but we haven't actually taken the T that we just created inside the string, converted it to an enum, and then we want to insert it inside this new variable we just created here. So we want to run something called a try parse method, which is where we actually try to parse t and see whether or not it can be parsed into the enum up there or into the enum type uh, that matches one of the list items. So what I can do is I can actually go and create a bool because this is going to return a true or false statement whether or not this can parse. And I'm just gonna call this one check parse. We can actually call this one get parse. That might make more sense. Um, then I'm just gonna go ahead and say we want to set this one equal to a enum type. 
And now the reason we wrote enum here, not product codes, is because we're just trying to convert this into the raw enum data type. So we don't need to write product codes here. So I'm going to say enum dot try parse parentheses semicolon. And then inside of here, we need two different parameters. We need to have the data that we're trying to parse. And we also need to write out because we're trying to output the result, if it does actually parse correctly, into another variable. So we're going to parse it or parse it and then return it out into the get parse variable we created up here. And we can actually do this because right now we're converting to an enum. If it does succeed, then it should be the same data type as product codes. So we can actually do this. So having done this, we now successfully uh, actually parsed a string into an enum. And we can actually check this. So if we were to go below here and actually run a console dot right line, just gonna copy this one, paste it down here. And in here, we're just gonna go and write uh, get parse. If we were to actually run this, you'll notice that we get T, which right now is successfully done because we would not have T inside this variable here if it failed parsing. So that's something to note. We can also go ahead and check this. So if we were to run the check parse inside instead, you can actually see that we get one, or sorry, true, we get true, uh, which means that we parsed this correctly. If I were to go in here and say I want to change this one from T to, I don't know, Teed, which doesn't exist up inside the enum, then it's going to parse incorrectly. So it's going to give me false. And it's not going to assign the data to the variable we created called get parse, if that makes sense. And I think this is pretty much what I want to show you today when it comes to creating structs and enums. Again, we're not really going to be using these that often inside our CCR projects, but they're still good to know about. So now we at least know what is a struct, what is an enum, and I will also, just in case you want to look more into enums, I will leave a link to Microsoft website where they talk about what exactly an enum is in the description of this video here. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.